So we'll now go into question 1.2. And 1.2 is biological terminology. You need to know your definitions, your terminology, and you need to try as hard as possible to spell the terminology correctly. 1.2.1, the process of change in certain or in the characteristics of biological species over time, the process of change is evolution. 1.2.2, the type of bonds found between nitrogenous bases in a DNA molecule. So let's look at our little diagram. By the way, you must know this diagram backwards. Um, you might be asked to draw a part of it. You might be asked to label a part of it. So really, you need to know this diagram. One nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. And so we are now looking at the types of bonds between the nitrogenous bases. So we're looking at these bonds. Here's a nitrogenous base, here's a nitrogenous base. We're looking at the base, uh, the bond between the two nitrogenous bases. And the answer is hydrogen bonds. The only other kind of bond that you need to know about in life sciences for grade 12 is a peptide bond. And peptide bonds are formed between amino acids during protein synthesis. So I want you to remember peptide bonds and proteins. And the building blocks of proteins are amino acids. So when you're asked a question about the bonds, if it's peptide bonds, we're talking about protein synthesis. Hydrogen bonds are the bonds between the nucleotides. 1.2.3, the structure that joins two chromatids of a chromosome. So we have a chromosome that is going to undergo DNA replication. And the two strands of DNA that are formed as a result are known as chromatids. And those chromatids are held together by a particular structure. What do we call that structure? It is a centromere. The division of the cytoplasm of a cell during cell division. So it's not really referring to meiosis or mitosis, but when we undergo cell division, it's first of all the nucleus that divides. And when the nucleus has divided, then the rest of the cytoplasm is going to divide. What do we call this division of the cytoplasm? It is cytokinesis. Kinesis means moving, and we're going to see these two cells moving apart, and cyto is referring to the cytoplasm. The division of the nucleus, just by the way, is called karyokinesis, where the karyo part refers to the nucleus. The process during meiosis, where there is an exchange of genetic material between chromatids, you're looking at this process, where we've got chromatid 1 and chromatid 2, chromatid 1 and chromatid 2, these are possibly the male or the paternal homologue, and this is the female or the maternal homologue. They're called together, ambivalent or homologous pair. 
Now at the very, very start of meiosis, during prophase one, we see that one of the chromatids is going to exchange material with the other chromatid. What do we call this process? You can call it crossing over or synapsis. Both terms are correct. The point at which they cross over is known as the chiasma. And the result is the recombination of genetic material. 1.2.6. The structures in animal cells that give rise to spindle fibers during cell division. So we have a cell and we start off cell division with the nuclear membrane breaking down. But in an animal cell, there are two structures. Uh, they're actually at right angles to each other. They together are called the centrosome. And each one separately is called a centriole. And the centrioles split up and migrate to opposite poles of the cell. So the pair, which is known as the centrosome, splits up into one centriole on the one side of the cell, one centriole on the other side of the cell. So our question said the structures in animal cells giving rise to those spindle fibers, if you use the term centrosome or centriole, it would be correct. What do we call similar structures that are inherited from a common ancestor? So the structure is similar, but they're modified for different functions. So same structures, but different functions. What kind of, um, what kind of inheritance or structures are we looking at? So for example, if we look at the human, we've got the humerus, we've got a radius, we've got an ulna, we've got carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. And the function of the arm or the um, upper limb is grasping, tool usage. Whereas in the dog, we've got the same complement of bones in the same order, and here, it's for locomotion. It walks and it runs. The bird, same complement of bones, obviously changing the structure, but the order and complement of bones is the same. And here it's for flying. Likewise with the bat, that's also for flying. And here for a whale, same complement of bones, and this time it's for swimming. So different structures, they are different structures, but they're very similar in terms of the way they're built up, but they have different functions. And we call this homologous, not chromosomes this time, but homologous structures. Or we can also refer to it as homology. The phase in the cell cycle during which DNA replication takes place. So we know that the cell cycle goes through this large period of time and activity known as interphase. When the cell is doing its normal business, and then the cell might undergo mitosis or meiosis, but it's going to undergo division. But just before the cell divides, the DNA must replicate so that each new cell, let's just move this down, each new cell has a complement of DNA that is identical. So we want to know 
in which phase in the cell cycle does DNA replication take place? You've learned about prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but these are all the phases relating to cell division. DNA replication takes place at the end of interphase. How about the organelle where translation occurs during protein synthesis? And you know translation involves the copy of the DNA known as messenger RNA and a transfer RNA and they are brought together by a double, uh, a, a, an organelle that has two subunits, a double subunited organelle known as the ribosome.